Here he comes. Like this creep pushing 60. <laughs> Charles Lawrence isn't looking to hook up with a 13-year-old girl. He's looking for a boy. How many people in the house? We're working with the cooperation of Fairfield, Connecticut Police and Tetrid Corps. We've even placed a microphone underneath a leaf. He lives only 2,000 feet away from our sting. No, he's just around the corner. On social media, Lawrence calls himself an 8 by 6 guy. Decoy clearly tells Lawrence his age. How old are you? Swear you won't report me? Of course not. Of course not. Decoy reveals... The sting is on. How you doing? Good. Come in. Is that guy supposed to be 13? He's not 13. Before he can <laughs> something from his car, Lawrence is about to get a big surprise. No, Chris. And if he thinks he he's in for got a him shot, straight away. What are you doing? Chris, he said, Chris, know, please. You have to explain wow. It. Off he goes. Come here, man. He runs out the door. He knows he's done now for the now. I know from the train is about to be derailed. The Fairfield cops nab him in the Off you go. They slap the cuffs on him and take him into the garage. Do you have any weapons? No. Just an 8 by 6 weapon. <laughs> he's put into the back seat of an unmarked car and taken to police headquarters. Hi everyone and welcome to part two of this Handsome vs Predator Charles Lawrence study. Watching that little recap just reminded me of the male decoy they used for this episode. He doesn't look 13 does he? <laughs> he looks in his 20s maybe. But that reminds me of the school runs I did where I remember first looking at some of the other kids as my son was coming out. And thinking some of these kids look absolutely humongous. What are they feeding them? They're like, like these huge beasts just walking out. You know, I'm quite tall as well. I'm over six foot, so I can understand it. But some of these kids look like they've been in the gym or, or taking magic grow pills or something. So maybe I am wrong and maybe this kid does look 13 <laughs> after all. <laughs> I mean, who knows anymore? He didn't really seem to fool Charles Lawrence, I don't think, because he did enter the house a little bit edgy. And as we know, he was only in there for less than a minute. I think he really wanted to take off. Notice he did remark that he did leave something in the car. It was probably protection or something, wasn't it? So that's his excuse to probably make a quick exit. He was snared by Chris Hansen, who could probably read the situation. He darted out there. So for this part two, I'm going to be taking a little look at the police interrogation later that night. And I see it's 44, 45 minutes long and it's in this kind of split screen setup. So it doesn't look very good quality again. So we'll see how that goes. We can still hear it at least. Now, as I've done with my previous watch alongs, I'll watch it all the way through on this stream. And when I come to upload it on the Film Dirt channel, on this video you're probably watching now, I'll edit out all the dead air, because I'm not going to be talking all the way through it. I do actually want to listen to all the legal jargon they're talking about. Okay, I'll set it up here. Are we ready to dive into this world of pain for Charles Lawrence and this uh, police interrogator, who I don't think is anyone I've seen before. So let's see how this goes. Okay, let's play. So this is an interesting split screen. We've got the angle of the cop. We can hear them coming in. There he is. As usual, these police videos are always terrible quality, aren't they? <laughs> they use the, the bare basic cameras they can possibly get. So this might be a more interesting view actually. You can still hear them at least. The sounds pretty good.
there's a real cop in uniform, like he should be. Are they exchanging small talk here? Chosen the closest for our privacy. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm an investigator. My name is Jason. I'm Detective Takis. You can call me Jason. Um, obviously, you know who you are. Mm -hmm. um, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, um, I want to make sure. Sorry. Yeah. Did you get that last message? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, from Pete Bravo. From Pete Bravo, yes. Yep. Um, my phone's going to be vibrating every now and then. Um, things that are going on here are kind of constantly evolving, so I'm, I want to apologize in advance for any interruptions. That we're <laughs> um, There's other prints. So I want to explain everything to you. Um, I want to go over your charges and make sure that you understand everything that's happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna, I want really you to ask me some questions before I kind of get into what I want to get into to make sure that you are comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, before I can do that, um, I have to read you your rights so that you're aware of uh, what your rights are and what you, what you can say and what you want to say. Um, we're going to go through it line by line, and once we get done with that, um, I want you to I want to open the floor to you. You can ask me anything you want to mm -hmm. understand things better, and then we'll go from there. Okay, okay does that sound all right? Mm -hmm. Well, hold on a second. I want to grab uh, a piece of paper that we need. We need this one. That's it, Charles. He's left the door open. It's time to go. <laughs> See him bolting out. Huge strides, the fastest he's ever run in his life. <laughs> Too late, he's back. So, ask for a lawyer. Is he going to be clever? No. Charges are um, criminal attempt to commit risk of injury to a minor, criminal attempt to commit sexual assault in the second degree, and enticing a minor. Those are the three charges. Okay. Uh, really, the first the first one is a misdemeanor. The last one is a misdemeanor. Uh, the most important charge, which is a felony in the state of Connecticut, is sexual assault in the second degree. Is a, is, a, is a felony, and that's the ser more serious out of the three. And I am happy to explain to you how we arrived to these charges, okay. um, if you want me to do so. Yeah. It's interesting that they use risk um, and injury to a minor, so I guess that does yeah. apply yeah. completely, doesn't it? Um, I have access, and I actually have on my phone, when it was sent to me, all of the communication between you and that individual that you were believed to be meeting. Kind of walk me through how you arrived there and, and what your intentions were. Yeah, I thought you were talking about 18. And so you thought you were being an 18 year old? Yeah, because I was, I was downstairs on my, on my couch. I was at my house. Okay. 18, 18 again. The story. So, uh, I apparently, my eye got scratched. <laughs> so I can't wear my contacts, so I'm, we I'm wearing these glasses. And I was downstairs, and I'm having a cup of coffee, and my glasses were upstairs. And I look, and you look, you know, I'm looking. I, I thought he said 18. I swear to God. I would never, ever in my entire life meet a 13 year old. That, that, I, I could say to my uncle. It's an absolute no. lie. Come on, Charles. Yeah. Consenting adults is a different story. I would you know, agree. I, I absolutely agree with you. Consenting adults. And, and, uh, and at 18 years old, obviously that's a consenting adult and something that you would feel comfortable with. Is that fair to say? Okay. My goal is not to embarrass you or, or belittle you or, or, or do a typical <laughs> cop thing you see on TV with a record. Your goal like is to gather evidence. It, it, the situation is what it is. We have arrived here and we need to deal with it now. Okay. okay? That's your goal, isn't it? Maybe get past this first hurdle to maybe allow that to happen more. Mm -hmm. um, I want to read something to you. Then maybe you can explain it to me. Are you law enforcement? Is it going to that line? It's usually the line they always go to when they question whether <laughs> they're talking to a cop or not. How old are you? They respond back. I swear you won't report me. 
respond, of course not. I mean, a report, I mean, people are going to report other people on that. Right, right. No, I get, I get what you're saying. Right. So he says, you swear you won't report me. And you say, of course not. Right. I, I, I would talk, I'm just talking, I wouldn't do that, I don't need to do that. Right. Right. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's, mm -hmm. of course not, that's kind of what I'm talking about. He writes back, 13. And I can show you, I can show you if you want to see. It says 13. I can't read that. I, I thought it said 18. It says 13. Okay. And that's fine. That's, that's fine. fine. Um, you're almost a neighbor, <laughs> laugh out loud. Um, so what are you looking for here? Blah, blah, blah. It's perfectly fine. Things, which, I, you know, again, we can, we can kind of go back to that. The one issue I'm having right. with, with your answer regarding, you know, the 18. Right. 13 is over, fine, sir. Um, so if you thought they were 18, you would have no concerns. No, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't, some people just say they're 18 and they're not. Right. So, if you thought they were 18, and that's obviously a situation that you feel comfortable with, if you thought that read 18. I've gone as far as to ask some specific questions about right. There would be no reason for you to ask this then. Right. Well, are you a cop right. or involved mm. in law enforcement? They respond back, laugh out loud, really? Mm. And you write back, gotta be careful. Yeah, that line is telling, isn't and it? They write back, yeah, man, I get it. So, the problem you're going to have... Mm. 13 is wrong and he knows it. Is, if you thought legitimately that the person was 18, and you thought that you read the number 18, at that point, from what you just said in your mind, you're really alleviated of any concerns about dealing with a minor or, or anything like that. That's true. Because, again, people could say they're 18, and they're not. But you didn't, you didn't say that. You just asked, after finding out, after mm. the age was written, which was 13, you're claiming 18. Right. That, that number was written. Yeah. You move forward with some other back and forth, which I can read. I'm looking, I'm looking yeah. to get away from that. Okay. So then you clearly are right. But I do that with everybody. Because I, 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 don't I, I don't understand why you'd be in trouble with anybody. I don't understand why you would write that or be concerned about that if, if in fact, you thought you read the number 18. It would be really that. that yeah. Well, we just talked yeah, about that. Right. Though, you know, that should be, no, it's not. You clearly said that it was not. That 18 and above. If you consent, consent, they're a consenting adult, and there's no issues there. You clearly, you, you, you just said. As long as they're not misrepresenting. Re, not re, re, misrepresenting. Misrepresenting, right. But you didn't, that's not what you wrote. That's not what no. you said. That was you know, part of any of your back and forth. Yeah. And then your next step after a few back and forths is, are you a law I person or are you a cop? When I walked in, I immediately was, was going to say, well, you're not 18. You're not 18. And, but I, and he asked me for to bring some. Like so I, I said when I said I was having a good point, I was, I was, I was out of there. There was no way okay. I was going to get well, involved you had, in that situation. In your messages, you said you were going to bring it. I did. It was in the car. Right. What kind of? What? What is in the car? What did you bring? It was a, a, a DVD. And what's yeah. on the DVD? Porn. What? What type? Gay, just regular gay porn. Regular gay porn. Yeah. Is it underage gay porn or is it no. adult? It's adult. It's higher quality. Uh, well, amateur. <laughs> I think it was amateur. Stuff. It's amateur stuff. Yeah. But what the, the people depicted on there, are they, of, are they adults or yeah. are they yeah. underage? Yeah. They're not underage. They're not underage. Okay. okay. Um, the, the problem that you're going to have, Charles, I'm not afraid to tell you, okay? You know, one, one man to another, one person to another, mm -hmm. one adult to another, is when you read these messages and you go through them line by line very carefully and you read them, your explanation does not match. Yeah, exactly. Because if you truly believe that you are going to meet with an 18-year-old person, like mm -hmm. you just said, right. there would be no second thoughts, concerns about whether or not the person that you're dealing with is law enforcement or involved law enforcement. But you clearly, you clearly not only write, you not only ask the question, but then you kind of double tap it because you say, you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah he's not careful. moving away from that question that he asked, is he? Well, that's kind of, that's kind of why we, that's kind of why we're here, Charles. You, 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 I don't you, want to do anything wrong. It, well, what you wanted, to, what people want to do sometimes, maybe what they intend. I don't want to get crazy with that, but at the end of the day, you did do something wrong today, and we and we, and we have to deal with that. I have never been with anyone underage, anyone under the age of eighteen. Would this have been yes. the first? This is this the first the time, time then. No, because he said he was eighteen. I, that's what I read. Okay. Well, it says it says. I know it says 15. It says Michael. I've never glasses on. I, 
13, I would have shot right down, I would have blocked him right down the road. Okay. So then why ask if he's involved in law enforcement? Yeah, I do that all the time because I just, I just, because I get, because I get, I, because I get afraid with 18 year old kids that, that, that represent themselves at 18. This happened to me before. And they're, and they're not 18. Yeah, but you don't write that. You don't write, hey, look, are you sure that's your age? You don't even, you don't even question just, it. The age is written. It's not even like, are you sure? Or, or I, I've been down this road before. Or, no, I've never been down this road. No, no, been no, down no, that road before. I've had people lie to you. Are you sure? How do I know it? Yeah. There's nothing like that. The, the age is thrown out there. And then look, and I'll read it. I mean, this is this is what's going to happen at the end of the day anyway. I mean, it, this is this is how it's going to be perceived. And, I mean, Chris Hansen is actually, I know him, he's a friend of mine. Not anymore, he isn't. I can do it on the train for years. So are you just buy or get it? School is in session. <laughs> More gay, but also somewhat buy. Do you watch porn? You ask. Yeah. You ask, what do you like to watch? What do you like, they ask? <laughs> Mostly gay porn and some bi porn. What do you want, you ask again? <laughs> Sweet. I like gay porn, DP, and ATM. You ask what's ATM, you write back DP is so hot. <laughs> so ask what is ATM, guys? <laughs> ATM is You write back, you're getting me hard, laugh out loud. I know what DP is, but ATM is a cash point, isn't it? Yes, DP is hot, they're right back. And then you respond, so do you think you're more of a on top? I don't know, I'm willing to learn it. Can you get away? So do you think you're more of a on top of a blah, blah, blah? <laughs> Are you a cop or involved in law enforcement? If you think you're talking to an 18 year old person, why are you asking that? that? Why are you at, why, but why? Why would you ask that? I, I, I watch TV. Yeah, but what, what's, what's to be concerned about? What, what is the issue if it's an 18 year old person? Like you said, it's a consent to adult. Would you, why would no. you even be concerned about that? Because I'm super careful. Not tonight, you weren't. I would never. Very keen tonight. I would never be one person. We get to, are you law enforcement? Are you a cop? I understand you've seen Chris's show before. Unfortunately, this is this is the way this is played out when you're here and you're being charged with these things. And you arrive at this person's house and you never at any point in time question the age or the number after I was the actor was sent to you. That's why I and you just was no as soon as I saw him I was leaving. He did not look. Even eighteen. You didn't leave <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't leave immediately, immediately upon landing eyes. That's not how it happened. He left me in the water. He said, you're bringing a point. I said, yes, it's not in my car. I was going to get it in my car and go. Right. What you need to understand is, I, I maybe maybe don't realize it, but I know more than you think I know. I was at the house. Mm -hmm. I was there. I got in the car with you. Right. I watched everything as it unfolded. I watched you pull up to the house. Okay. Oh, I watched wow. you get out of the car. I watched you walk into the house. I watched you make conversation with this boy who clearly does not look like he's 18 years old, as you just said, that he does not look like he's 18 years old. Right, and I was going to do it. And I, and I watched you make conversations. Doesn't look 18, he looks in his 20s. And what you're not, oh, I, I don't want to call you a liar, because I don't want to get into that, but anything sexual or anything like that. I don't, want, I don't want to get into like this thing where you're up, but the, you did an about face upon seeing Chris Hansen, not before. You, did, you didn't do an about face because you saw yeah, when he asked me about the porn, you guys I was going to go, go, you guys were going to, you guys, as soon as he asked me about the porn, and, and what have you. Yeah, that's not true. That's not true. Well, as soon as he asked me about the, the, the porn, I said I was going to, I was going to go get it. That's when Chris walked into the Chris Hansen is a friend of mine. Get, walk right out. <laughs> so I swear to God, and he walked out. Well, after I had the water, but I was going to, he gave me the water, <laughs> he asked me about the porn, and I said, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go out, because I left it in the car, I'm going to go get it. And that's when Chris, as I was turning, Chris, when Chris walked into the room. But this is all just a, a big mistake and yes. a misunderstanding. Why, why, why go out the door? Why not? You know Chris. Why not? Why not address it? Why not say, hey, wait a minute. Whoa, time out. 
There's no way. 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 There's no People make, state, make mistakes every day on many levels. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a mistake. That's that's a mistake. mistake. But I, think I, think that's, that's, I think that's what you made today. When you were slid over into the seat by the officers that took you into custody, yeah. and then I sat down next to you, right. before I could introduce myself, before I could say a word, do you remember what you said to me? Mm-hmm. This is going like, to be on TV. Wow. I want you to think about sitting in the car, starting over. What was the first thing that you remember saying to me? I've seen this show before. Mm-hmm. Have, sir? Where's the door? I would imagine it would be. You looked right at me and you said, I was going to tell the reason I came, I was going to tell this boy he shouldn't be doing this. I came here. Yeah, as soon as I saw him, yeah. No, you said, I came here to tell this boy that he shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. So if you thought you were going to be an 18 year old boy, even an 18, for a consensual encounter, which you feel is totally okay, which in the grand scheme of things, based on legality, it is. If that's the case, then who are you coming at for to tell a boy after having a conversation that you had? It's clear that he at least knows what he's done. It doesn't make any sense. If you thought you were oh. meeting, if you thought you were meeting an eighteen-year-old boy for a consensual encounter because you missed mm. the number, right? Yeah. That doesn't make sense with your point of. He still should I, be. I came, I came here to tell him that he, he, should be he shouldn't be doing this. He still should be. Doing this. I'm not looking down at you. I don't think that you're a bad person. I, I, I really don't. At the end of the day, I'm doing a job. My job is to investigate this, apply the applicable charges that, that are... And lock you up. And what's happened. Um, and lock up bad guys. And it gets submitted to a judge. So why don't you sit here for one moment, put up your thoughts. I'm going to grab that form, explain it to you, we'll throw it out. And then they will go through the car. And then we'll, I'll get you downstairs and we can start the bond part of it. Get that figured out. You have to be interviewed for that. You know, the uh, ship commander sits down with you, asks you some questions. That's all, all part of the mission. You think I might be able to get out of here? Um, just, if you're able to make bond, as soon as you're able to make that happen, yeah. as soon as someone can come down here with the money required, they sign off on it, you're out of here. Okay? It's the same with store. Mm-hmm. Can you get a little water? Uh, when we get downstairs, uh, we'll do it then, okay? I've seen this show before. Chris Hansen's a friend of mine. <laughs> I know what happens. So he's just going to sit here on camera with his head in his hands. How long are they going to leave him here? She's just going to come in and witness the consent. That's all. She's going to be in two people with that. So we're going to search uh, your, your vehicle. It's a 2014 Jeep Wrangler Red, right? Yeah. Do you know your plate number? Can I get red? 6AFTJ5? Yeah. That's right. Okay. And we're just going to search the vehicle, and that's it. Yeah. Um, why don't you just do me a favor and leave this down here first for me, please? And then if you decide to do so, you sign up. I'm going to walk you down. Okay. And we're uh, going to move on to the next thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, well, it may not have uh, the drawstring now, like we thought, but now we're going to, but we're going to go back downstairs where we can, where we can go. Ah. Okay. Right, okay, 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 okay. That was interesting, wasn't it? Let's get rid of that. Oh, how did that get there? <laughs> so this... 
this little encounter, this cop was very thorough. He he took on everything that Lawrence said, but he he kept going back to that sentence he said, are you involved in law enforcement and what led up to that? It was kind of like he definitely knew he was in the wrong and he was just checking, you know, if he was in the clear or not. And that's an indication of guilt. So you can see, again, the cop, he he was fishing around that theory, wasn't he? Very thoroughly, (laughs) just to get him to reveal more. And this is what we always say, never speak to the police, especially if you're innocent. If you're guilty, then, you know, you're fair game, as it were. But it's very unlikely the police are there to clear your name, to help you out, to set you free. You know, that that's rare. If you're guilty, they're going to keep fishing to make sure that you're locked up. Because it looks good on their record. You know, it's another notch on the bedpost, as it were. You're... you're justifying the police time and investment into getting you locked up and also they're participating in this show I mean it's a tv show so is this a serious use of police time or are they participating in some reality show well the guy is definitely guilty even though he hasn't technically done anything yet but it's a grooming crime so to look good on the police would be to lock these guys up. Now with these watch-alongs for this show, I never know whether to make fun of these guys or to treat it as a as a serious, you know, a serious matter, which it definitely is. Charles Lawrence is a mature man. He should know better. But it just shows you, even though you know these laws exist. He admitted that he knew Chris Hansen previously and he's watched his show for sure. They still try and solicit underage people for sex. That story about him scratching his eye, and it may be true if you're wearing contact lenses, you do sometimes get pink eye. It's just a, a natural part of having to wear lenses. But would it prevent him from seeing the age as 13 (laughs) and instead seeing it as 18? Okay, I pulled up his his wiki here. And let's see what happened to him. He pleaded guilty to three felonies. Second degree attempted sexual assault of a minor. Yep. Risk or injury to a minor involving contact with the intimate parts of someone under 16. And enticing someone under 16 through interactive computer use. Okay, that's three, three felonies. And he only served two years in prison. So he didn't serve his full sentence. So on good, good behavior, I guess he only served two years. So that's what pleading guilty does, I assume. And of course, on top of that, he's uh, on the registered sex offender list. And according to Chris, the conductors of the train that he and Lawrence commuted on together have given him the nickname Choo Choo Charlie. (laughs) You know, that's quite a kind name considering what else they could have called him. Right, so this one got off lightly. I think he's actually quite lucky considering... Apart from the sentence of being plastered all over the internet. So I think let's put the nail on this coffin here. And I don't know who else I'm going to look at next. I'm just going to call the names at random. Tempted to see them first, but I'm going to hold off because I like to watch them for the first time with you guys and record everything on this channel. So until next time. Thanks to the Capenning channel for uploading the police video and all the best to you. Stay out of trouble. Take care.